Welcome to podcast two of Elders Rising. Today, the focus that we were thinking of talking about is... Traders. Traders. I saw a post that was um, said something effective like, you, those, those, the enemies that declare themselves are f- far less dangerous than those that you trust. And it's just, it's true how... Yeah. When when you begin to trust people, that's where you open yourself up to being betrayed. Well, let's look at, at a quick, for instance, with Mitt Romney. Mm-hmm. Um, when he ran back in 2016, um, he ran here in Utah because he knew it was a sure thing. Everybody thought, oh, he's a Mormon. I'm a Mormon. He's Republican. I'm a Republican. So he must obviously have the same ideals and principles that I do. Naturally, he's going to want everything I want. Mm, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I told you to primary against him. Well, not you to primary against him, but to vote against him in the primaries. I told everybody to yeah. vote against him in the primaries because I knew exactly what it was. And it caused a lot of grief with a lot of people. And they said, well... Look at him. I did. I looked at his record. I looked at the things that he did as, when he was governor and the things that he said. He started Obamacare before Obama. Yeah. And he, the, the Massachusetts gun control, which is pretty gnarly and pretty bad, he was behind that. And it's not so much that it was his constituents that wanted it. It was the things that he said when he passed it. So you looked at the, I looked at those and, you know, people were upset with me for bringing out that part of him. Oh, he's pro-Second Amendment. No, he's not. There's, and the thing that's so interesting to me is there's a, there's a fine line and it gets really blurred, especially in the gospel where, I mean, there's a part of charity that is giving people the benefit of the doubt. There's a part of charity that is um, being very, you, you just, you, you expect the best of others and you, you forgive when they don't perform. And that on a personal level is very important. Mm. On a personal level, you need to do that because that's, that's, you need to follow Christ, and it's not our place to be judging. But on a political level, that's not personal. There's, there's, it's a totally different game. Yeah, they're going to be rep- Well, they're supposed to be representing you and your viewpoints, um, the things that you support. Um, so, I mean, you are absolutely right to judge them, judge their character. You have to make a judgment <clears throat> on that. Yes. Because the, uh, I mean, Christ Himself said. Um, we need to be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. And um, if I remember right, maybe I'm misquoting it. I don't remember off the top of my head, but something to that effect. And it's it, the the idea, though, is you have to observe and realize when people are snakes, and you have to observe and, pe- and realize when people are are not what they are representing themselves to be. And that happens on multiple levels, whether it's in the church, whether it's in your friends groups, whether it's, I mean, you, you get a sense of feel for someone who is not completely upfront and not completely outright honest with you. And, and you have to trust those feelings because a lot of times that they lead you to what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. You should be pretty judgmental and, um, analytical and everything when it comes to sending somebody to represent you because in this day and age they say they will but they don't and you need to be able to decipher who's actually going to do a better job at representing you as opposed to furthering their own political agenda and with with Romney one of the things that bothers me so much is he hides behind the church yep and so people are saying, oh, is this really how you guys feel? It's not how I feel. Well, it's, it's, it's so interesting. And he, he, always, he always tries to put on a good face, um, one that he can, he, you, you try and, he tries to represent himself in a way where it's, it looks honorable for him to do cowardly things. Yeah. He tries to make it look honorable to do cowardly things. Yeah. And that is, that's cowardly. Well, we talked about that last week also about fear yeah and the victim mentality and that's not what we should be seeing from our representatives yeah some of the other ones that are bad are governor herbert he's well the shutdown has been very 
I think it's opened a lot of people's eyes mm -hmm. to make them realize, hey, what, this is not okay. This yeah. is this garbage. Well, I was saying ever since the very beginning, because once we started hearing about it in China and everything, I immediately started looking it up and doing my own research and looking at the hard numbers on it. And I came to the conclusion that, you know, it's not really as big of a deal as they as they were already making it out to be. Mitch, you did not believe the people in white lab coats. No. You, shame on you, shame <laughs> on you. If they're wearing a white lab coat, you know you have to believe them. If they have a, a P or an H or a D in their name, you have to believe exactly what they're saying anymore and you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, that's true. Well, and that's what everybody said. Um, Everybody. Next next episode, we're getting white lab coats so we can tell you the truth. <laughs> it's official. It's official. No, but when when the whole thing started going down and then when it made its way here to the States and everybody started shutting everything down and we're trying to mandate everything, I was saying, you know, this really isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it's going to be for some people. Any, any virus, any bug will. It's going to kill people. It's just mm -hmm. the way it is because... People are dying... How dare you? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, so people are going to die, but the most, most of the people that were affected had several other conditions that... Well, just look at when they stopped recording the flu deaths. Do you know when they stopped recording the flu deaths? No. Like in February. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why, they, why would we worry about it? You can't it? record the flu deaths and the coronaviruses, then you're double dipping. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We don't want but, to make the numbers look bad. But I, I had some conversations with some people, and um, everybody was saying, well, if people would just do the right thing and stay home. They would just like, care about why, others and wear should, your mask. Why should I have to stay home? I'm not worried about it. I've done my own research, and I've looked into it, and I'm a comp competent adult, mostly. Uh, you I am. I should be able to make that choice for myself. If I want to go out into a restaurant and and risk it if i want to go into the gas station and get my own drink out of the fountain those are decisions that i should be able to make and and people were talking well they they people just need to do the right thing and people won't do the right thing so the government needs to force them that's uh, well well you know the people that were saying this they claim to be conservatives they claim to be you know republicans and it's you know you can't say on Monday I'm a patriot and, and then on Wednesday say, yeah, the government needs to step in and make this right because you're scared. You, I mean, that doesn't make you a patriot. That just makes you a statist and you don't know it. Yep. The thing that in politics, specifically in politics, not specifically, in, in, in anything, any, anything to do with government, when someone gives you a reason to be less responsible for your own actions, you should be very wary of that that motivation. Um, like when you're saying, oh, but people just do the right thing. The the whole thing is, well, are you expecting people to not be responsible for their own actions? Yeah. Um, same with the gun control laws. So I, I had a I had a, a friend that I I it was a mission companion, and I really uh, I respect him. I think he's a good guy. He's just he <coughs> he's foolish in a lot of ways. And he, he tried to make the argument to me of like, you can't tell me if someone is, is really mad and they have a gun, they're, they're not going to use it. And I was like, if you're really mad and you have a bat, if you're really mad and you have a car, you can use it. If you're mad, you can use whatever you want. The argument you're making, the core, mm. the core part of that argument is you don't think people should be responsible for their own actions. And that's, that's what it comes down to. And that's, that's where our founders were very clear. If you want, if you want safety, then tyranny is your option. Yeah. Well, and I love that argument. Well, how do you know that somebody who has a gun isn't just going to get really mad and use it? I carry a gun every day. I've never been so mad to the point that I'm like, I'm going to shoot this guy. I hear you say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but have I? No. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See, I haven't done it. <laughs> I know. I. I mean, I've. I've been in altercations with people, and I've been really mad with people. But going to my gun and shooting them because I was mad was never. It's not something that goes my through. Mind. Yeah, it's not something that goes through your mind because you understand ramifications. You understand like there's. 
that's why. Well, why the hell am I going to shoot somebody over a disagreement? <laughs> that's stupid. That's so that's immature. That's lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, I mean, if you were, if you were 12, maybe, yeah, we need well, to, yeah, you're not fully I, developed. Your, yeah. your frontal cortex is not developed. Like it's, I think that's what they call it. The part that registers. I don't know. My wife was telling me about it. She did school stuff. <laughs> we were talking about you having a degree earlier today. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> if somebody has a, I'm any kind of, any, uh, I'm an educated <laughs> fan. Uh, that's the thing, though, is we, and, and here's, the, here's the core problem that you have on an on a, um, intellectual level. You cannot be an expert <clears throat> in everything. You can't be an expert in everything. So you have to rely on someone else's judgment on some things. But the more you do that, the more vulnerable you are to other people's judgment. And that's just the, the nature of it. And w one of the things that you, when you go to college and you learn and you um, go out and look up, I mean, whether you're in engineering, whether you're in like social sciences, whatever you're in, if you're, if, if the, you're, you're trained to take the expert's word of advice, and then that becomes your guiding principle. But you're long, are the, long gone are the days where you're actually trained to be <clears throat> analytical of what is actually being taught. And, and college has, has become so much of an indoctrination ground that it's, it's, very, it's very sad to see how many kids go thinking that they're getting a good education, but they're becoming indoctrinated to the leading principles of the day. Yeah. but yet not how to analyze, okay, is this a good theory? Is this a bad theory? Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? It's just, this is what the, the professionals say, and that's what I believe. <laughs> As if they don't have their own agenda. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it's driving down the freeway, I come across all these signs, say, mask up, you know, and all this other stuff. I, I told my wife last time we drove down to, Og uh, down to Ogden, I said, you know, are we in 1930s Germany? Because that's what it was reminding me of. Wear a mask. Show you care. I'm not going to wear a mask. It's, Why it's, should I? It's the upside down. It's where we're living in the upside down. And the way that the Bible talks about it is how they make um, evil be good and good be evil. And that's, that's what you're seeing today. Again, pulling off of what we <clears throat> what we talked about last time, but the 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 virtues that we hold are not virtuous as a society. Cowardly. Cowardly. And a nation of cowards will not last. Nation. That's an interesting one. And this is one where, like, one of the things that I that I come back to is we we know that Christ will come again and the nations will be nations. But right now, there's with the globalization, the efforts trying to make one world, um, nations are trying to be split apart. I'm, I'm a firm believer that every nation deserves its own home. And, that, and if you can blur those lines, that's one thing that really destroys what the peace that we can have. It's the same principle as breaking up the family unit, just on, on a bigger scale. Larger scale, but yeah. Why do you say it's the same principle? What happens when you break up the family? What happens to society? It no longer knows how to trust each other. It no longer knows how to. It, it no longer has a base core set of of ways of behaving that are appropriate and accepted by everyone. And that's, I mean, <clears throat> it happens when you, when you blend nations. This is, this is one of the things, so my wife's from Romania, and, Romania, and in Romania, it's one of the gypsy capitals of the world. You have the Romanians, who are from the Roman Empire, and you have the gypsies, who are from the, uh, I think it was Mongolians, that were, they were basically, they were marauders, and they, they got broken off of their main civilization, and they, Part of them settled in Romania, and those two nations live within one country, and they don't get along. And you have the when the when Romania entered the EU, you had um, 
a lot of gypsies that would go out into Italy and go out into France and go out into England and go out into all of this, the, into the European nations. And they would steal and they would create their gypsy hierarchies and they would create their just ruckus. And when the, when the authorities got a hold of them, they had Romanian passports. They, they were the Roman, the, the Roman people. And, um, and they gave Romania a very bad name and the Romanians were pissed about it. Because it's like you're that's that's us. You're, you're, you're representing di- us. Exactly. And so there's there's a big conflict there. And it's like on a personal level, my wife going to school, she had lots of rum, uh, gypsy friends and stuff. And you, you get to know people on a personal level and you can build bonds on a personal level. But on a nationwide level, if you don't have those core sets of values, for instance, the gypsies, they they don't in the, in their culture, they don't rep they don't respect personal property if you can obtain something it's yours it's not like oh that's it's not stealing it's just you got it and somebody gets it from you then they got it that's that's their their view on things and so they when they when you look at stealing it's not it's not nearly as big of a deal to them compared to someone who's from a western culture that has property rights as a part of their core part of their their philosophy and it's just like you Right now, the whole the whole idea that America is a melting pot where we everybody's happy and you have multiculturalism, that's that deludes what nation we have. It deludes the values that we have, and that's what the purpose of it is. Yeah. We need to be an American first and foremost, and then I mean it's fine to honor your heritage where you're from. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but. First and foremost, you need to be an American. You know, I have a lot of Danish ancestry, but I was born in America. My parents, my grandparents were born in America. Mm -hmm. I'm an American. I'm not Danish. I'm not a Danish uh, American. I'm just an American. That's where our loyalties need to lie. That's what we need to be first and foremost. Because, in my opinion, you're either an American or you're not. If you're not an American, leave. Go somewhere else. If you think this place is so bad and so awful, go to somewhere that that aligns with your ideals. And the thing that kills me when you say that is people will will say, well, why don't you move? Where the hell am I going to go? This is the only place for me to go. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else is going to allow me to maintain my individual rights that I was born with. Nowhere else is going to afford that to me. We look at the look at the UK. This dude a couple of years ago had his dog doing a Hitler salute at the TV. Count or, Dankula. Yeah, or something something stupid. Yeah, and he went to jail. It, it was making fun of like it was his 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 girlfriend's dog, and he was making fun like he was he was making fun of <clears throat> like just trying to give his girlfriend a hard time. Yeah, he went to jail for it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Is that the world you want? Is that the world you want your kids to grow up in? Because I want to be able to say whatever I want, as long as I don't threaten anybody. I Which, think... when I was in D.C., nobody would let me near the Capitol building. They thought I was going to go to jail. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody in our group. I said, let's go to the Capitol building. And this is right when they were doing the impeachment. They said, nope. <laughs> nope, we're not going to do that. And I said, Why? Well, we don't want to bail you out of jail. I'm not going to do anything to get thrown in jail. I'm an American citizen. I have the right to voice my opinion. As long as I don't threaten anybody, I can say as I please. I can do as I please. Well, here's, I mean, coming back to the, the nation thing, here's why they're focusing on the gender, or not the gender, the um, race war, is because that's, I mean, the, the Marxist, Marxist ideology originally started with your classism. You wanted to get the, the classes to fight. Mm-hmm. But here in the States, because we've had 50, 60 years of a melting pot ideology where we're pushing for multiculturalism, we're pushing for in- inclusivity, um, that causes a lot of problems when people are included in a group but are not invested in that group. And that's yeah. why, that's why I mean, like, like you're saying, my wife, she's Romanian. She's always going to be from Romania, but she identifies as American. She, she loves her country, she loves where mm-hmm. she comes from, but she, when she took that oath to become a citizen, she, she what's, the, what's the right way to say that? She foregu- forewent um, prior, 
sovereignties. I forget how they I forget how they word it, but basically she it was it was a all or nothing type thing. Yeah. And and we were united in our family and that's that's she she has integrated into this society and she has become loyal to the society. But if you don't have that integration, if you don't have that that shared set of values where okay, these are the rules that I'm gonna play by, then you can't play in the in the society. Yeah. And, and and bringing up the the race war, they're they're trying to p pit each other. I mean, each each of the each of the different um, cultures that are fighting. I mean, you look at the black community. They've been told for years that they, no matter what they do, they can't get ahead and they can't get get um, they can't get up get out from under the thumb of the man. And that's a that's a terrible thing to grow up with believing. That's yeah. a terrible thing to to be told your whole life. And, and then well, when and they instill it in them at such a young age and then keep telling them the same thing their entire life and then through, and the, through the culture them. and stuff yeah through the through the gangster lifestyle it's like oh you got to be bad to be good and you and and someone who someone who is actually plays by the rules and and, and works hard and becomes successful they're considered a coon they're considered a, oh you you're you're sucking up to the man and it's like no I'm I'm living for myself I'm not trying to um, trying to forge my own destiny exactly. And it's, 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 I mean, the, I, I've, I've got a, a <clears throat> Mexican buddy. He's, he grew, he was born in California. He's, he's Mexican, but he's not, he was born in the States. He, he's not, um, American in the sense of like ethnicity wise, but he's not Mexican. He hardly speaks Spanish. He speaks enough Spanish to sell drugs. That's it. You know? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, if I were to go to Mexico, I would be rejected as a, as a gringo. And, and. He, he's just like, what, what do I tell my kids? What, what culture do I leave to my kids? And that's why it's like every, you need to have a way to leave your family a legacy. You, yeah. that's, that's, uh, a man leaves his children a legacy to follow. That's, that's part of being um, a leader a, of your household, a part of being a, a, a father. And, and one of the things that, that is sad for, for this race war is he, he called me up and he was like, he, was like he, he just about ran over a guy that was, that was at a rally that was carrying a oh, Trump yeah. flag. I remember. And I told you about him. And he was like, what do I do? I, he's like, I just need to talk to one of my white friends. And, and he was like, oh, they were just, he, he, it, it, was all, it was all in his mind where it was like, these guys are fighting, these guys are fighting. And, and, and I talked to him and I was like, dude, when we fight each other, when, when, when white people fight Mexicans or white people fight black people or black people fight Mexicans or black people fight white people, you know, that's when the government wins. When we are divided as an as a as a people who identify as Americans, that's when the government wins because then they can step in and say, "Oh, we need to take these, we need to take this privilege to stop these violence. We need to take the, you know." And and the government, the government will never release authority or power. They're never going to do that. No. <clears throat> Once they take something as their own, the only way to get it back is to take it back. Is to demand it. But we live in a nation of cowards. You know... That's what we've become. How many people do you know right now if you said, I'm organizing a, you know, a march on the Capitol to make them repeal the mask mandates? How many people do you think that you could get right now to go with you? I don't know. Not very many. I would guess less than 20. Yeah, and well, and a big part of that is people aren't going to prioritize their freedom either. Oh, I'm busy. I've got this, or I've I got gotta that. Work, I, I got have other this, obligations, got, yeah. which are legitimate obligations. But then again, if you don't make a priority of having your freedom protected, then it, you don't have that priority, and it just it's it's not important enough for you to do something about it. Yeah. I like the water. <laughs> so peaceful. That's the thing that like, I don't know, one of the things, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about what, what is my culture? What is my culture? And one of the things that, that I derived from that, <clears throat> from that searching is a sense of self-sustaining self, you know, use it up, wear it out, do, make, make it do or do without, like you have to make things work. You have to work hard and, and make things work. And, 
that's that's a big part of the of the American culture is you need to you where you need to go and and make things work and do whatever's required. I, I know that when when I would talk to families in Romania there was there was like, oh it's so hard you can't you can't you gotta you got a job and it's hard and stuff and it's like when when my family needs it, I've I've taken on three jobs. I've I've done whatever I needed to do, you know, because you do whatever it is you have to do. You don't stop until what's needed is done. And right now one of the things that we have to take into our own hands is freedom is the the push to sustain the constitution and we need to hold our leaders accountable for that we don't have protection leaders. thank you we need to hold we our representatives. representatives thank you i know that that that, Ooh, that triggers bugs you. me Ooh, that makes me so mad our leaders they're not our leaders <laughs> well our elected officials they're not an official they are your representative they are your employee remind them just like when people say our democracy. No, no. I used to not really care, but I do now because it's been become so ingrained in our society, our elected leaders. Yeah. They're not elected to lead. They're elected to represent. They're elected to govern for us, not govern us. One of the things that um, I also found out recently, I didn't know this, but um, capitalism is a Marxist term. Marx came up with the term capitalism. It's market economies. We have a market economy. We yeah. don't have a capitalist economy. Capitalism is a slur that Marx came up with. Yeah, it's I a market-based economy. I know. I didn't. I didn't know that that that's where the word capitalism came from until recently. I didn't know that either. I, there's a lot of things I'm learning every day. Learned. 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 I feel like we should have a study in smoking jackets. <laughs> Maybe we'll be taken nice more. Nice library behind we'll us. We'll be taken more seriously. People will think that we're educated. <laughs> That's the, the. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. It's so silly to give someone who has who has a degree a extra extra clout. I have the same degree. I mean, Bill Nye's is in. Um, in I want what type of engineering? I think it was mechanical engineering. He has a he has a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. That's that's the only degree he has. But everybody gives him. He wears a white lab coat, and so you got to believe what he says. <laughs> you just have to believe it. It's white lab coat talking on TV. If you're I'm so smart. <laughs> if you're getting information from TV, you need to realize that the information you're getting is tailored to teach you something that is not the actual reality of things. It's, it's, there's, there's oftentimes truth in there. There's oftentimes important things in there, but the way that it's presented is always an agenda driven. The absolute truth. Yeah. I mean, same with, same with things that are like that post that I, um, that was talked about from the FBI where they said, oh, we, we have not found any, um, we've not arrested any race, uh, extremists for, for starting fires for arson. And, but yet they've arrested people that have started fires. They didn't say that they had arrested people. They just said they hadn't arrested extremists. And it, it's one of those things yeah. where it's like, it's a word play where it's like, oh, I'm telling the truth because we didn't arrest extremists. But then you have like several different branches of Antifa who are tweeting out saying that they had organized and coordinated um, the lighting of fires for their um, political reasons. And it's just like, oh, okay, you claim that these people aren't extremists. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Maybe it's, um, maybe that it's, uh, what do you call it? Situ uh, tangential, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You're you're representing it in a way to make people think differently from what the actual happenings was, and the narrative is always tailored. It's well, always <clears throat> yeah. Well, what's the other? What's the flip side of that coin? For white people who believe, well, anybody who believes in the Constitution and joins a militia to do their part to do their civic duty to the Republic. That they're extremists? We're extremists. Yeah. That's the flip side of the coin. See, these guys can go loot and burn shit all day long. Boogaloo want. boys. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Isn't that what it's called? I have a story to tell you after this. Okay, we've never <laughs> talked about this. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting conversation I had with the, with the fellow. 
Hey, but yeah, I mean, the flip side of that coin is you belong to a militia, you're white, you believe in the Constitution and freedom, you obviously must be a right-wing extremist racist. You have shot piece. a gun. How dare you? <laughs> racist yeah. what? I, didn't, I missed what you were saying. I was laughing at my own superior intellect. <laughs> I have a degree. You're just a lowly tradesman. <laughs> oh, man. Such a stupid idea. <coughs> Okay. I don't know. You'll have to rewind it. I don't oh know dear, no, I've, I've I've completely. I don't remember what you're saying. Either. But, no, it was just talking about how if you are on one side, you're not an extremist. It's just like God. saying mostly peaceful as the city burns. Yeah, that's. The, the, and here I am, on the other side of the spectrum, doing my job to try and ensure that the republic and the constitution stand and survive, mm-hmm. so that I can pass it down to my children and wanting to be free and that's so extreme. extreme wanting to be left alone is extreme you know i got it's it's easy to get in the mindset of like oh the the government is so powerful or oh you know there's always the there's always it's just there's a weight of you're only one person and there's so much against you there's there's this weight mm-hmm. that comes into mind but there's a reason why our government was so small for so long and one of the reasons, that, the, the core reason, I believe, is because regardless of who is in power, if the government is small, that power that the person that's holding, the group or whatever it is who's holding the power, isn't infringing upon your rights when it's a small government. But well, the, they don't hold power, they hold authority. Allegedly. Allegedly. I love that word. I use it a lot. You allegedly use it a lot. Learned. No, uh, small government, <clears throat> the founders framed it as a small government for a reason. The smaller it is, the harder it is to be out of control. And we are, it's like you said, it stayed so small for so long, but our grandparents' generation, our parents' generation, they allowed it to grow exponentially until we're no longer truly free. We are free-range humans with the illusion of being free. Free Free-range humans. That right there is brilliant. Free-range humans. You, they don't care about you. They don't care about me. They care about your money. Let me, let me explain that term though. So you've got free-range chickens, right? You've got, so somebody who goes out and they, they, they create a homestead. They, they do what they call they have free range animals where you have an, a, a chicken and they go out and you, you give it a yard and it can run around in its yard, but it's still fenced in. But, it, but it's, it's a free range chicken, so it can go out and pick and scratch in the dirt and it thinks it's free. But really it's not free, it's just an illusion. Free range human is exactly what the government is, trying, is, is doing to us. Is you have the illusion of freedom. If you think you're free, walk into a store without a mask and smile at people and you'll know that Oh, I'm, I'm a pariah. I'm a, I'm a someone who's not. That it's it's not socially accepted, because of what the government has said and because of what is done. And if you if you insist on not wearing a mask, then you're going to have um, problems where you don't actually like you're you're going to run into the law at some point. I actually saw an interesting post on the old Facebook the other day. Mm-hmm. It said that people who wear their masks and their face shields and do their precautions or what not, that's perfectly normal. But to refuse, allegedly, you're a sociopath. Really? I mean, I'm, I'm not... It's the I don't have a degree in mental health, but uh, I know what a sociopath is. And that doesn't really fit the description of somebody who doesn't want or can't or just flat out won't wear a mask. Well, it's a law. Well, is it? Is it? It's a mandate. But where does the authority come from to make that mandate? There is no such authority lined out in the Constitution. Well, they've passed laws. Well, that's all well and good. It's been, they've said ever since the beginning 
if law goes against the Constitution. It's null and void. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. So, I mean, yeah, they can write you a ticket, and you can fight it, and in theory, you should be able to beat it, but you won't. Our justice system has become a joke, because you can be within within the parameters of the Constitution living your life, and you can still be fine. One of the but things... One of one one of one of the things that I was going to say about being a free range human mm-hmm. is look at your house. You buy a house, you pay for that house, you pay it off. You might own the house, but the property is never truly yours. If you don't pay your your property taxes, they'll steal they'll take everything it. away from you. And they'll do it with the hand of the law. Mm-hmm. It's just like my truck. I've had my truck for 13 years. I've put 200,000 miles on that truck. I don't know how much money I've spent registering that truck every year. I've paid it off. And I've registered it. But as soon as I don't register it, I can't drive it on the roads that I've already paid for. So how free are we really? Look at your dog. Like we, I registered my dog just this last week. You live in a communist place. Oh, that's terrible. I don't have to register my animals. I don't even have to do emissions. It's pretty awesome. That's great. <laughs> because I haven't had a muffler on my truck for like four years. It fell off. <laughs> Poor old bugger. Uh, and all of it is about control. Like that's, I mean, if you try to go and build a wing on your house, if you try to build a deck on your house and you don't have, if you try to build a retaining wall in your backyard and you don't have the right permissions, you don't have the right... <laughs> You're free um, as long as you've paid your taxes and asked for permission. Yeah. Go with your hat in your hand. And, Please, can I? Please, may I, with my own. With my own land and my own house and my own money, can I if please build? If it pleases build? the crown. Yeah. The, the thing that is so interesting to me is I think of, like, how, how little it took for our founders to really put an end to it if you if you were to take the money that is taken out of your paycheck before you see it and you were to see that every month and every every paycheck and yeah you can look at it but if you had to go and take it to take the physical cash to the courthouse or to wherever and pay it there would be the 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 outrage that people would realize how much of their livings how much of their life um is donated to our government. It's not donated, it's extorted. Extorted, thank you. You know what I mean. It's it's just, it's... it's. I don't willingly give it to them. They take it from me under threat of force. If I were to do the same thing to you, they'd throw me in prison. Rightfully for so. For extortion. But they, they parade themselves under the guise of government and law when there's no authority laid out. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a federal income tax until 1932, I think. Somewhere around there. And it's interesting. I, I, I remember... So I read the book... Um, what was it called? It's the one that um, Ezra Taft Benson suggested in conference. It was... Um, there was lots of them. None dare call it conspiracy. conspiracy. I think that's what it was. But it was, and it's, it was back in like the 70s when it was written. It was written in the time of, um, what's his name, Nixon, I believe. But it was, it was talking about how, um, I don't remember if it was from this book or something else but that I read recently, but it was talking about how the rich want high taxes. And one of the reasons is because they use the high taxes and then they use their lobbyists to get ahead of their competition because they make they make laws that makes them not have to pay the unfavorable taxes and you look at like amazon people don't realize this but amazon is subsidized by us the reason that you can have such cheap shipping is because they subsidize their shipping and we pay for it as a from the from the government from their subsidies you look at all any time that the government tries to solve a problem or fix something it, you you can get a lot of uh, farmers upset if you talk about the subsidies in the in the farming industry. You can get a lot of people upset because there's there's ways that things are done 
that the government has rigged the system so that it's not a market system and and it's just it it, it um, destroys the way that that our, our system is meant to be it destroys the 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 pressure that supply and demand naturally curtail and when you look at it on a on a the individual level like the the way that we are the way that we have debt pulled into the system you you no longer can use you no longer can use the natural supply and demand to to judge things because people can instead of having actual demand they can go out and get loans and and that augments what the supply is and what the or what the demand is and so the supply meets the augmented demand and it's and it's um it's a lot of a, there's a lot of uh just money bookkeeping that that makes things run and and some people say oh that's great because it creates opportunity and there's there's arguments for it there's reasons why people have accepted it but when it's all said and done it makes things more complicated which gives the people who have the time and, and authority to or not authority the influence to adjust laws to um, give incentives to to hire lobbyists or hire lawyers it gives those people an incentive over the people who are naturally trying to um, just be entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But it's also easy to get down on things when, when it's all said and done. We live in such a great time. We live in, I mean, think about it. You can go out and you can, you can prepare, you can get, uh, you can get firearms, you can get ammo, you can get food storage. There's no, nothing stopping you from actually doing something about preparing for what's going to come. And Supply and demand. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to find 5.56 or 2.23 lately? Yes. It's, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. You can find it. Compared to what it used to be, but you can find it. You can find it before but barely. Yeah, but barely. There's still lots of ammo out there, though. There's if still options. Have, if you don't have it, if you haven't picked something out yet, um, you can still find AKs. You can still find the seven six two by thirty nine or five four five by by thirty nine. Uh, Three oh eight still out there. I mean these these are. Well, the five four five, not so much, but the seven six two by thirty nine and three oh eight or seven six two by fifty one, you can still find that, and it's still relatively um, hasn't been hit by the by the panic buyers, just because you know the AK or the M one A or those other platforms haven't aren't the most popular platforms in America. They're not as user friendly as the AR-15, but I mean they're not terrible choices. Something's better than nothing. For as long as it can go bang every time you pull the trigger. <laughs> for uh, speaking to like the layman, because this is where I was—I feel like I was six months ago. Speaking to a layman who knows, who just knows, okay, if it shoots, it's good. Like it's better than nothing. What would you suggest someone just getting started out? How would they start? Where, where would they go? Uh, well, there's a lot of gun nuts in this country. And? Find one of your friends that knows, well, that is actually knowledgeable in firearms and ask them. Um, there'll be a treasure trove worth of information and they will probably overwhelm you. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that that sums it up for what what has actually happened to personal experiences told me. <laughs> but that's but it's good but but okay not everybody has friends that they, they not everybody first off if you have a friend that's a gun nut you don't always know that they're a gun nut how do you how do you start where do you start if you don't know where to start I, i've been in this for a long time i don't know <laughs> okay i'll tell um, you look up on youtube like YouTube. For, i mean youtube is such a good resource and and youtube sometimes is less friendly specifically to to the Second Amendment. Community. To the Second Amendment, yeah. So BitChute's a good option as well. But um, 
what what kind of stuff do should someone look for to to know if it's credible or not? Like, because because um, there are people who are nuts out there that are just like, oh, <laughs> they tell you stupid things to do. That, well, that's that's the uh, that's the hard part. I mean, you'll have people that'll tell you, go buy a fifty. What the hell are you gonna do with a fifty? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cool, but I mean, realistically, what are you gonna do with it? And I mean, really, you want something that is well built um reliable obviously um and it has to be able to perform within within a certain degree of accuracy uh so if someone's got a home just a home they've got their family you suggest first starting with a some kind of rifle or do you suggest starting with a pistol or a shotgun what do you suggest starting with i depends on what kind of residence you live in if you're in an apartment I would probably stick with with a pistol or a rifle, um, but you have to remember that you are personally responsible for every single projectile that exits that barrel. If it goes if it goes out the barrel, misses, and goes into the next apartment, whether it hits somebody or not, that's a criminal charge. Um, depending on on the loads and whatever you're running through your home defense gun and you know, they might over penetrate they might not that's why it's important to youtube the different types of of ammunition you can use i carry federal um during the summer i carry federal hsts 124 grains because i don't have to um, defeat barriers like I do in the winter time. During the winter time, I carry the 147s because they're heavier. They'll defeat the barriers. When you say better. barriers, are you referring to clothes, uh, winter dry, clothing, winter clothing, drywall, um, whatever could be between that bullet and um, a hit. That would be your your bar be defeating a barrier. Mm -hmm. The heavier it is, the better it will push through that. But I mean, that's like I said, it's it's kind of a, du a double edged sword. So in the summertime, I carry a lighter bullet that is going to dissipate its energy much faster once it hits than a heavier bullet that's going to be harder to stop. During the winter, people wear coats, hoodies, whatever. I have to go through those extra layers before you want that and dissipation. And still, yeah, and still maintain lethality mm -hmm. and a pistol is a terrible weapon I mean yeah it's better than nothing that's fortunately what you can pretty well carry you know as a civilian I mean people are going to look at you funny for carrying a rifle I'm all for it I don't do it <laughs> not a, well I am a jackass <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, it comes down to finding tracking down the information to find um, good re good reliable sources of your weapon systems and ammunition and running everything together as a whole clear as mud one of the things that you said to me today that when we were, when we were shooting I really liked is that you can spend a lot of money on gear but if you don't have the training for it it's not going to do you much good yeah. And so it's it, the first thing you need to start with is training. You need to start with, okay, putting some rounds through your, your rifle or putting some rounds through your whatever it is. Um, make sure that you're comfortable with, the, with the, the gear that you have so that you can know how to reload, so you can know how to um, just, ju just the basic operations of it. And you can, in, a, in the heat of a, of, a, of a situation that you need to handle, you can, you can know you can have some level of competency. The the um, training is going to be far more uh, useful than the gear will at first, but eventually you do need to spend money and get some good gear yeah. too. Well, uh, when you're first starting out, you need to put the money into your platform. I mean, you know, the base of your platform, so like your, your rifle. Put the money into your rifle, um, and then you can build it up from there there's nothing wrong with starting out with your rifle with just iron sights mm -hmm. if your rifle costs a thousand bucks yeah that's a lot of money i get it but you can add and build on top of that um and obviously you will need some gear 
Mm -hmm. For a pistol, you need a holster. Mm -hmm. For your rifle, you need a way to carry um, your spare mags. So, I mean, you do need gear, but if you don't have the funds to do it, don't go out and buy all the all the freaking high speed cool man gear. Is if, that a brand, Cool Man? <laughs> or is that just something you do? I should start it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no, in, in the gun community, it's called Gucci gear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, uh, you need to put the money in your platform. You do have to have the gear to be able to start out. But don't, don't sacrifice uh, the money for ammo and training for gear. Mm -hmm. It's like I was telling you today with, with my the way my belt set up versus the way your belt set up. Yeah. Mine is, I don't just say this because it's the way that I have it set up. I ran with the setup you're running for a while. And then I found some something better and started running it. And I'll be damned if it's not better. Just it's the way it is. But I, you know, that my rifle pistol pouch setup was a hundred bucks. So don't spend that hundred bucks on your rifle and your pistol pouch when you could be spending that on ammo. For on ammo, mm -hmm. because you can have all the you can have all the stuff in the world that's not going to make you a more competent, better shooter. And there's a difference between being able to put uh, well. I'll just go back and say, uh, just because you have a gun doesn't mean you know how to shoot. And just because you know how to shoot doesn't mean you know how to fight. Yeah. I know people who could put rounds in the ten ring all day long, and that's not going to do you a bit of good in an actual fight. They call it getting off the X, and that means being able to move and do all, move, process all these different things in your mind and everything else. While you're while fighting. all this is going on, and you have to be able to do that because if you think you're just going to be able to stand in the middle of the hallway and just engage, you're going to get shot. Mm. So you have you have to. And it's really an <coughs> art. You have to know how to do these things, and you're only going to learn that by doing it. And another thing that you can do now, and I think I talked about this last week too, is one of the things you can do now when ammo is in short supply you can do dry fire practice building that muscle memory is irreplaceable yeah i noticed that how um just just from what we went through today that was we didn't go through a ton but i could tell how much that that repetition helps every little bit helps yeah and it's just it's 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 getting yourself to do it um one of the things that that is always going to be true is like the the one of the hardest steps is just starting once you just start to actually do something then it's like it becomes so much less intimidating to actually know okay this is where i need to start this is where i need to okay i need to i need to go and practice my my reloading i need to go and practice my my drawing i need to go and practice drawing from concealment um those are the little things that you can that you can do that just don't require any once you've got the investment of your your pistol or the investment of your whatever it is your 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 platform like you said then you can actually start and do things without without any additional cost yeah other than the time i can't tell you when i'm on swing shift how much time i spend in my living room dressed up like a nerd <laughs> doing dry fire i sure hope your kids make fun of you they are in school again so i'm back at it <laughs> <laughs> but i do i i it's not uncommon for me when i'm home alone to put my gear on and practice doing mag changes, transitions, all this other stuff when nobody else is home to make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, dry fire practice really is irreplaceable. I mean, yeah, it's not it's not as ideal and it's not as good as live fire where you're getting the recoil. You have to you have to deal with malfunctions as they present themselves or, you know, mm -hmm. running out of of weapon uh running ammo. out of ammo and having to transition to your other weapon it's not as ideal but i mean there's still other options out there like i talked about last week there's some pretty realistic airsoft guns out there mm -hmm. and you can use that and then you're getting that instant feedback of yeah i'm pulling up i'm presenting 
I'm engaging, my land, my rounds are landing where they need to land. You're getting the feedback that you need to with the airsofts. Mm -hmm. And that can translate back into that muscle your, memory. Your, yeah, your muscle memory and the real, real world training to an extent. <laughs> One of the things, I was in a conversation with my mom this last week. And I mentioned something. I saw about your mom on Wednesday. She walked right past me. Didn't even notice me. Yeah, she's probably ignoring you. I'm sure she noticed you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Thanks. Just kidding. <laughs> but <I> um, <laughs> one thing that um, I, I mentioned something about Antifa, and she had no idea what Antifa was. And and one of the things that surprised me is how um, how normal people just aren't aware of what is going on in the country right now they're 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 if it, it, m most people are working on their lives they're working on okay the rat race the go to work the do your thing you know try and provide most for your people family. don't know because they don't want to know either yeah there's 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 definitely truth to that but also i think that they one of the things that there's there's this graph that i'm trying to remember the name of it and I deal with it in software a little bit, where you learn a little bit about a topic and you think you understand the topic, but then you start learning and your, your confidence in that, in that um, field just drops off. And then over time, you build it back up again. Yeah. But it's like it, it, the, the graph literally looks like you go and it's up like an up spike and then a huge drop in a low, low, like a big U where you only after, after a lot of, of, of information. I'm confident. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I'm a professional. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I, I think that the news, one of the big problems with the media that people have right now is it gives them enough information to make them feel informed. And, but they're not. And they're not. And it's, it's not mine. You better edit that. <laughs> Besides, they probably can't see us anyway. I don't think they can. <laughs> that's why I was, I was talking with my hands, and I was like, oh, that's not useful at all. I, I probably know. didn't even hit record. I don't even know. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> don't, I, no, I, I can see, I can see uh, some light over the mountains and some lights in the background. That's all we need. But that's all I can see. That's all I can see. But this has been going for like an hour. Is it really? Yeah. 58. Oh, seven. It's okay. Nobody will listen anyways. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, look. It's those retards. <laughs> but what I, was get, what I was getting at is there's so much that, um, that we need to... You need to let people know about. And, and I don't know the best way to do that. I don't know the best way to to get people up to speed on how much crazy stuff is going on because it, it's really true the more that you research and the more that you look into things the more that you sound like a complete lunatic to the to the normie <laughs> you know the person that's just trying to get by and it's like well i'll tell you that i look a lot less crazy to a lot of people than i did six months ago it's whether or not they'll admit it yeah yeah <laughs> you never because you know there's that 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 stigma of being aware and knowing what's going on telling people about it and they're like no way because a lot of things you just don't want to believe mm -hmm. and then as you it's, come to realize that the what people have been telling you is right you don't want to accept that you were wrong not so much that you're wrong but this person who seems like they're so far out there you don't want to admit that they're right I run into that problem a lot. People don't want to admit that the things that I was telling them months or even years ago were right. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, she likes to think that I'm that I that I'm off my rocker. It's comfortable. But most of the time, most of the time, the things that I say, like when they come out, and she won't always tell me directly that I was right unless I call her on it. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll tell, she'll tell my wife. <laughs> She's like, Mitch was right, but I, oh, I hate to admit it. <laughs> but that, that's the thing is like, how, how do you, um, if somebody's not paying attention, what's, how do you break that to them? It's like, those are... You don't. Because if they don't want to know, they're not going to know. They have to, they have to hit that wall themselves. And, 
they have to wake up to the awful state in which they found themselves. But like I just said, most people don't want to. They don't want to know. They want to keep going off in their little gumdrop and lollipop world and not see what's going on because, you know, I don't see it. It's not real. It's not happening. Yeah. People want to live in denial. People want to be comfortable. How do you think the government gets away with things that they get away with? They keep you comfortable. As long as you're comfortable, you're not going to say anything. It's the, I mean, it's the Roman thing of um, give them gladiators and give them bread, entertainment and food. And, bread and, and spectacle. Yeah. That's why it, it was the, the guy, the guy who made the TV, he refused to have one in his house, if I remember right. He's like, I don't want my kids having that. Like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like there's, there's so much that, that we invest ourselves in. The time that we spend, it's like what is that time being used for? And sometimes it's just the mind-numbing, okay, I'm, I've worked hard, I want to get home, and I want to watch a show, and I want to just turn, turn my brain off. And every now and then, I don't think that that's bad. I don't think that there's, there's something inherently wrong with that. But it's becoming worse and worse because the more, the more time goes by, the more urgent the, the wake-up needs to happen. And so it's, it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to make people think that, oh, the, they, have to, they have to panic. But it's like if you're not doing anything now, it's it's getting too late to start. You need to you need to wake up. You need to send your family away so that you can dress up in your <laughs> your <laughs> high speed cool man. High speed your Gucci gear. My, it's not. It's not. Mine's not Gucci gear. Mine's old and beat up. <laughs> it's about time to replace half of it. <laughs> Well, you don't get to use that. I apologize. Term yet. Don't hurt me. You don't get to use that term yet. That's from that's for my people. <laughs> oh, fair enough. You come you know. back when you're not a noob. <laughs> Filthy FNG. I remember. I remember you had just gotten back from Iraq and you asked me a question and it was something to do with the military. And I told you I was like, honestly, Mitch, this isn't my realm of expertise. Like I, I don't, I don't have an opinion on that. And I don't. I defer to what you would say. And you're like. I respect that. And I was like, it made me feel good because it was, it was one of those things where it's like, it, you asked me an opinion on something that I didn't know. And I just, I just straight up told you, I was like, I don't know. And, and you got to deflect that. What? <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, am I, am I, am I doing, <laughs> I probably am. Somebody asked you a question. Yeah, I don't know. You just deflect it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what um, <clears throat> what do you think that and this I don't know I don't know if you want to get into this but lighting we need lighting people can't see us I don't think they want to see us honestly. have you seen us <laughs> yeah yeah I can't look away from myself <laughs> <I can't look. laughs> um, damn it Hi. You're on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. I'm not editing this out. <laughs> Fred says he's not going to edit this out either. Oh, she hung up on me. <laughs> That's. It's, are you calling her back? No. <laughs> okay. I just remembered that I had a picture that I really wanted to show you. Katie made me delete it out of my pictures, though, so my kids didn't see it. Check that out. Are those the greatest glasses you've ever seen? Those are great glasses. I put them in my locker and I put them on the other day and I got everybody's attention. I'd say, can we be professional for one damn day? It was awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Of course um, it's funny. <laughs> I was going to ask you something. I'm trying to remember what it was. Basically, I was going to ask, um, no, that wasn't it. What was it? Oh, do you, 
I, I guess, and I don't know, if you don't want to get into it, we'll talk about it a different time. But um, do you think, what do you think is going to happen with the election? Because we know already that they're, um, like Zuckerberg's mentioned how he's, he, he's already stated that they're planning on um, heavily, how did he, heavily monitoring and um, providing additional context, I think is the term that he used. But basically he's going, when he said when either side claims that they've, they've won, they're going to do, um, they're going to. Well, they're not going to do that for either side. Yeah, obviously, obviously. But um, that's, I think that's they the way know, he, I think they know that um, Trump has a really good chance of getting reelected. He will get reelected. Because the Democrats candidate is it's literally a dementia riddled a, a throwaway candidate yeah i mean any, anybody who votes for for joe biden i'm not saying that they support pedophilia but they're definitely that's not something they're that, definitely turning a blind eye to it that's definitely something that's not a disqualifier it is for me well yeah that, that's what i'm saying but people are gonna say well trump's a pedophile too prove it yeah. show me a video of him sniffing little girls and touching them in inappropriate places on national TV. No, nonetheless. There was a, I mean, I'm, I don't think Donald Trump is our savior at all, by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. I think he's, you know, I think he's arrogant. I think he's the I best. I think person. he, but I also think that he is a genuine person at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think he's fairly generous. All in all, I say he's probably a, pretty okay guy his morals are a little bit questionable but that's not my business he's 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 done the best job as a president that we've had in my lifetime yeah i mean I, whether he's whether he's a good person or not i don't know and i don't i suspect he's not you know as far as like obviously the promiscuity the well, all, all of that you know i suspect that there, i mean but that's none of my business where where i he's, didn't we don't elect a person because of their, you know, their values in that way. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a piece of shit, be a piece of shit. Cool, but represent me. Do what's right for the nation. As long as you follow the Constitution, I really don't care. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My job, uh, I mean, I don't vote for him if he wants to pay a hundred thousand of his own dollars to some porn star for some sex i don't care he's not using my money like the rest of them do he's not violating the constitution yeah it's kind of a dirtball thing to do but there's really the, it's not my business his yeah. personal life isn't my business there's so much like i mean there's so much that you can there's so many different angles that you can make arguments for. I mean, you can talk about like, oh, look at look at Clinton and Lewinsky and all that. And there's, but but when it comes down to it, what you said right there is like, is he defending the Constitution? Trump is. Is he represent? Uh, uh, better than okay. He's better than the last two. Better than the last like six. Three. <laughs> oh. Well, to say that he is, I mean, he's violated the Constitution, but who of them don't now? Not saying that it's okay, but I mean, for an example, Donald Trump's passed more gun control legislation than Obama ever would have dreamed of. Yeah, that's no good. And, you know, guns are kind of an important thing. They're, as long as we retain the right to remain armed we are truly somewhat free you look at australia they if you don't know australia had a gun buyback policy recently what was it like eight a years ago a long time ago was it a long time ago it was in the 90s oh okay i, I didn't I, I didn't know how long ago but um and their video came out from australia where there were people not wearing masks and you had cops that were grabbing them by the throat and forcing them to uh, to go to jail basically simply because they didn't have masks on it's like people can't defend themselves they have there, there was a guy that was in Australia that um, cops were they broke into his house and um, arrested him and he was like I didn't do nothing wrong and and it was I, I don't know I don't remember what this case was but it was just like he, he's like he he was 
the, he had no way of defending himself in his own home because the authorities knew he had no guns. Yeah. Well. Yeah. As long as you, as long as you retain the right to bear arms, you are truly free. You can forge your own destiny. Destiny. You may lose like way bad, mm -hmm. but it's still on your terms. You're making that choice to be able to stand and fight as a man should. But I guess you don't have you don't have the same option if all you have is a spatula. <laughs> yeah, because that's all they have in the UK anymore. <laughs> they can't even have knives anymore. Pussies. Was, yeah, <laughs> that's have, a whole long day. Have you seen the <laughs> tangent? The, yeah, have you seen the um, people throwing acid on other people in mm, the UK? They do that in the. They've been doing that in the Middle East for decades. Yeah, it's so. Where do you think that trend came from? It's from all the damn refugees that they brought in the into Europe. Mm -hmm. They want to say that they don't cause problems. Well, they they do. Who was it that sacked Rome? Those refugees. It was the, was it the Visigoths? After it was like forty years, thirty-six years or something after they, they gave a refugee to two hundred thousand Visigoths. They they sacked Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's just you remember the refugee crisis a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when ISIS was rolling around all. Big and bad through the Middle East. Yeah. Everybody's like, we need to let them in. No, we don't. No, you don't. Sink the ships. I don't have, I don't have to let them in. Because they were saying, well, most of them are, are women and children. Well, no, most of them were, were military-aged males. Which, if you don't have, the, if you don't have the fortitude to grab a rifle and defend your own home, sure as hell don't need you here. If you're not going to do it for your own country, your own family, your own people, are you going to do it here? No. So why should we let you here? If you're not willing to fix the problems in your own house, you're not, you're not going to do the right thing in your new nation. Well, Dieter Reuchdorf was a, was a refugee. That's kind of a different circumstance. Mm -hmm. I mean... Granted, I'm not the most charitable, giving people the benefit of the doubt. It it comes back to, on a personal level versus on a, on a macro level. I mean, Christ, when he was at the well, if I remember correctly, there was a Samaritan that came to him and asked him to teach her. And he said, his response was something to the effect of, it's not right to take the food that's meant for the children and toss it to the dogs. Meaning, I'm not here to teach you. And her response was, that's true. But sometimes the food, the crumbs fall off the table and the dogs can eat it up. And he said, and he had compassion on her and he, and he taught her. And, it, and he said, if all the people who would have faith is like unto her, um, he, it was, it was, he gave some praise to her, but basically Christ was sent to the Israelites and he wasn't or to the to the Jews and he wasn't sent to the Samaritans at that time. When the apostles when the apostles after Christ's death, when Peter had the vision where he was told to take the gospel into the nations, that's when the gospel was opened up to be shared with everyone, the the fulfilling of the law of Moses. And that's where that came and that's where the the gathering of Israel, I guess you could say, started. This is going all off memory, so I could be a little bit, uh, I could be mixing the stories a little bit, but to that effect, like, we, we, we focus so much on the, oh, we, we take one story and extrapolate it to a macro, and it's not, that's, that's foolishness. Any, Uchtdorf himself said, any virtue taken to the extreme becomes a vice. And so it's like, okay, if we think that just because this happened with this person, we need to need to accept all refugees and stuff. That's not true. You need to protect your your home. It, you need to protect your 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 nation. Yeah. We can't we can't sacrifice 
the things that Christ taught us in the name of niceness. We can't only worship the lamb. Christ came as the lamb and the lion. He's both. And we have to acknowledge him as both. If we only worship the lamb, we're only getting part of the gospel. Yeah. All right, you need to go to bed. I'm pretty tired. Yeah. 4.30 comes really early. Okay, man. It was a pleasure. I know it was. Of course it was. Oh! Aren't you fancy? I wanted to make sure it didn't fall. <laughs> it's just a black screen right now. I know. I told you that earlier. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? I, oh, Jesus. <laughs>